Imagine you're building a house for your family. You want it to be spacious, comfortable, and secure. But what if you don't have the right foundation, or the walls or roof aren't quite right? Your house would be a disaster. And that's what happens when you don't get storage permissions right for FS Logics. You end up with a mess of profiles and shares that don't perform as you expect and could result in corruption, data loss, and security risks. So I'm going to show you how to avoid these problems and set up your storage permissions correctly, no matter which method you want to use. First, let's talk options. Here's the doc that shows all of these supported storage solutions. Now, starting from the left, we've got some honorable mentions. Storage space is direct. This is a Windows file server and preferably a cluster that you would have to set up and manage yourself. And that's really great if you know how, but because of all the other methods being cloud managed and scalable, I don't recommend it, but there it is. As for blob storage, this works okay, but you're gonna need cloud cache to really make it work and it doesn't perform near as well as an SMB file share. So I don't recommend it either, which leaves you with Azure NetApp files and Azure files and each one of these has their strength. NetApp Files is the fastest storage in the cloud with up to 400,000 IOPS of storage performance. Azure Files is no slouch either. It can do up to 100,000 IOPS, but the cost of NetApp Files is a lot higher per user. So unless you have more than 4,000 users or another enterprise class storage workload, I wouldn't suggest this one, but I'll show you how simple it is to set up in a second. Finally, we have Azure Files. And this one really gives you the best bang for your buck overall, but there's a lot that can go wrong here. Over in the Azure portal, you wanna to go to your NetApp files, and I'll assume that you already have a capacity pool set up. Then you wanna to go to your Active Directory connections. Click join at the top, and then you need to provide your DNS servers so it can find your Active Directory, and then the DNS name of your domain, and the AD site name, which can be found in AD sites and services. For me, this is Azure, but yours might still be default first site. Now the server prefix here will be used when creating the AD computer object that's really gonna proxy all of your authentication requests. And then the OU path, which is optional, can be found by going to AD users and computers. Just right click on the OU that you want, go to properties, click the attribute editor at the top, and then copy the distinguished name. Then just paste it in here. If you don't specify an OU path, by the way, it just goes to the computer's container. Oh, but uh, one thing, just remember to remove the DC equals references at the end of the line, or it's gonna yell at you. And there's a bunch of other options that you can check off and select, but the ones that are really necessary here are your administrators, and then of course your credentials. And that'll be used to create the AD computer account. And that's just username and password, and then you click join. Now the eagle-eyed among you would notice here that nothing happens. That's because it only creates the AD computer object when you have a volume. So go and create a new volume, give it a name, set your quota, and then select your network. And this network does need to be peered with your domain controller network. Click next and then select SMB as the protocol and your AD join here will be selected for you. Just give it a share name, click next and then add your tags and click create. In a few minutes, you should be done. From here, we just need NTFS permissions, which We'll come back to in a minute. Now let's switch gears and talk about Azure files. And here, there's a lot of options. After you've created a file share, and at the top, right next to the words Active Directory, click there, and you've got three basic choices. Active Directory, which is your traditional domain controllers, Azure Active Directory domain services, which we'll talk about in a minute, and Azure AD Kerberos. Oh, and there is one other way to go that's not any of these guys, that would let you go 100% cloud. Now I do have a dedicated video on the channel for each one of these areas, but let's run through them quick. And then we'll get to the share permissions in just a second. Now, if you wanna use your traditional Active Directory authentication, you'd click right over here. And then you've got these steps. Now you have to follow them and there is a separate video here to help you walk through them all. Basically, you need to download and install a PowerShell module and run some commands, and that'll create an AD computer object and that acts again like an authentication proxy. And when you sign in, you communicate with Active Directory and AD will communicate with the file share for you. Azure Active Directory Domain Services is something I generally don't recommend because it's almost never what customers expect it to be. It is not an extension of your existing domains and you have no domain admin rights. So you're very limited in how you can set up and use it. But it is supported for FSLogix. 
And after you've built Azure AD domain services, it's as simple as checking the box right over here. Then we still need storage permissions, which we're coming to, I promise. Finally, there's Azure AD Kerberos. And this is a cool new feature that lets you go almost 100% cloud, but it still requires synced users. But to set it up, you just click over here and then check the box. Click save. And now down here, if you want to use NTFS permissions, which we need for FS Logics, you've got to enter this data, starting with your domain name. And then we need a domain GUID, which you can find by going to your domain controller or whatever other machine in your environment you can run an AD PowerShell command from. And the command here would be inside parentheses, just to make it easy, get dash AD domain dot object GUID. Copy that value and paste it over here and click save. Then you've got to go to Azure AD applications, search for the name of your storage account. And on the left, go to API permissions, which have all been set up here for you with one exception. You must click grant for admin consent, which means only a global admin can do this. So now that your preferred method of authentication is set up, we still need file share permissions. Now with the exception of blob storage, that doesn't need anything because it's using the storage account access key. All the other guys only need windows NTFS permissions. Azure Files is the outlier. It needs Azure and NTFS permissions. So we'll get to NTFS in a second. And now exactly how you set this up will depend on how you answer this question. At the bottom here, you can set up permissions for all authenticated users in your environment. That means if a user logs on to a shared Azure virtual desktop session, they would be able to set up an FSLogix profile. Now, if you're cool with that, Set this to enabled, and then from the drop down, select SMB Share Contributor. Now, I know that some of you lock things down pretty tightly, so you don't want to allow all your users to do anything. So, I've got a way for you to do that too. You would leave this disabled, but you're going to need to add something extra. Now, everybody, go back to your storage account, look at Access Control, and you want to add a new role. Search for SMB and everybody needs to add the SMB share elevated contributor. This is going to be your share admin, which is necessary to set up the NTFS permissions. Now the regular contributor is what all of you who left the last step disabled need. Those are people who can access the file share, select your role and click next, and then click over here to add your members for that role, select them from the drop down, and then create. So looking at all the roles, everyone should have the elevated contributor. And if you had disabled that earlier section, you'll also have the share contributor listed here. But if you enabled the share section earlier, you won't see the contributor here. Clear as mud. Okay, let's move on. Now, all of you NetApp and storage spaces fans wake up because we're finally at NTFS permissions. Now, everybody go back to the file share and at the top, click connect, then click show script over here and copy all the code and then log on to Windows as your elevated contributor and open PowerShell. Now paste your code and run it and then open the file explorer, but notice something missing. Where's the drive? Well, the problem here is one that catches a lot of you off guard and that is context. But if you look back at PowerShell here and type get dash PS drive, notice I do have a T drive. So why can't I see it in the file explorer? Well, you see, I am logged in with my admin account, but I also opened PowerShell as administrator, which is a different user context than your regular login. So to just keep things clean, I'll do a remove dash PS drive and get rid of that T drive. So now that that's gone, I'll open PowerShell normally and then run the same script again. When I pop over to file explorer, there it is. Make sense. And you can add this in three different ways in the windows file explorer right here or we can use the iCackles command line, or we can add it through FS Logics policies using SDDL. Now, whichever way you want to do it, here's the permissions that we need to apply straight out of the docs. Now, admin here, that's pretty easy. They need full control over everything in every place. So they're pretty good. So in the file explorer, we'll right click on the drive, go to properties, go to the security tab, click the advanced button. And the very first thing to do is disable inheritance. And if you're prompted here, you want to remove the permissions. Don't copy anything. Now add in your elevated contributors group and give them full control over everything. Next, you want to add the creator owner role. 
they only need modify access and you want to change the drop down at the top to subfolders and files only then click OK. And here's where things get a little bit tricky. For those of you who are back in Azure files and you did that enabled part, you need to modify the authenticated users. And if you left it disabled, then you need to click add. Find your FSLogix users group who should have access to this particular file share. And then the permissions for your group and the authenticated users should be the same thing. They should be modify at this folder only. Then click OK to close out everything. And just go ahead and create a test folder here and then verify you can see it from the Azure Files side. Now, if you prefer iCackles, just modify the code here from the docs for your UNC path and run those commands and you're good. Now, SDDL stands for Security Descriptor Definition Language. It's basically a string that identifies your share and the permissions that it should have for your users. And this is a FSLogix setting. So you could go to FSLogix in your group policies, profile containers, advanced, and then you want to set access control for SID folder. Enable that, but what exactly do you put in here? Unfortunately, it's not the UNC path to the share. So you're going to need to open PowerShell and you'll have to run the get-acl command and give it the path to the test folder that you created. And you're going to get this really long string. Now the docs tell you here exactly how to replace things and modify it. And then you'll get your final value and that's what you put into your policy. And no matter which way you do it, through SDDL, iCackles, or the File Explorer, you should get the exact same result. If not, you didn't do it right. Anyway, once you're done, you'll want to test logging in with the user, and they should be able to create their profile and log in, and everything should work. Now, there is one bonus way that you can access your file share, and that's the 100% cloud-only method, which doesn't use Active Directory authentication at all. You won't even have to set up NTFS permissions. And the best thing is that this works with cloud only users, which I know a lot of you want, but there is one big catch, which I'll tell you about in a minute. Now I'm logged into my Azure AD joined VM as my admin account. And when I open a command prompt, not as administrator, just regular command, and I type cmdkey.exe space forward slash list, it shows that my user has no credentials stored in the credential manager. Now we can create one, using the storage account access key, which we find back in our storage account. Go to access keys on the left and copy either one of those keys. And then the command will look something like this, adding a credential with the target of the storage account with the access key as the password. Now for this to work for FS logics, we need to add this credential in the system context so that the computer can access the share, not the user. Now, if you just directly run the code here, or even if you use PowerShell, it's not going to work. So how can you run it? Well, here's a few ways. Go to your virtual machine, scroll down in the blade till you get to the operations section and click the run command. Here, select to run a PowerShell. Then you can paste in this script, which I showed off in the last video, linked in the video description, and that will execute the command in the system context and all your problems are solved. Now, another way, of course, you could do this is by running a custom script extension as part of your VM builds, like I'm doing here in this ARM template, which is found in my public GitHub repo. And the last way that you could run this is from inside Windows. But for that, we're going to need some help from Mark Racinovich. He invented the Sys internals tools, among many other things, and I've already downloaded those tools onto this VM. Now, from my normal command prompt, I can type in the command psexec.exe space forward slash question mark, and I can scroll down to find the slash s flag, which will run a command in the system context. And if I do that with the CMD key space list, we can see that there's three creds that I couldn't see even when logged in with my admin user. So using PS exec slash s, I can run this command and that'll add the storage account credentials in the system context. And then I can run the list command and see that I've got it. Now, even though it's there, when I go back to my user context, I still have nothing. So this is awesome, right? I can finally go 100% cloud. What could go wrong? <laughs> well, there is one catch. Any local admin on this VM has the ability to elevate to the system context if they know how, which means that the local admins would have access to your profiles. Now, if you're all good with that in your environment, go ahead and set this up. Then you're gonna need one more thing. Over in your FSLogix policies, 
you want to go to your profile container, advanced folder, and here you need to enable access network as computer. Then you're good to go. So now we've talked about these policies a few times, but as far as storage goes, you need two things. One, it needs to be enabled. And second is you need to set your VHD locations for the UNC path. And we can do all this in a few ways. You can set the registry manually or with a script like this one, which is found on my GitHub repo, link down below. Or you can use policies from either Active Directory Group Policy or Intune Policy. Now in the download of every FSLogix agent, there are the ADMX and ADML files. Now for Active Directory, add those files to your domain controller's GPO location, then open Group Policy Management Console. On the Intune side, you're gonna to wanna to go to Devices and then Configuration Policies. At the top, click Import ADMX and click Add. Upload your ADMX and ADML files right there. And then once that's uploaded, create a new profile. Select Windows 10 and then Templates. At the bottom, you wanna select Imported Admin Templates Give it a name and a description, click next, and there's the FSLogix policies. Either way you wanna go, turn on enabled, and then set the VHD locations for your UNC path. Now, comment below with the word cloud cache if you're interested in going that direction, because that's a whole separate deep dive that I can create for you. Anyway, let me know how you have FSLogix set up, what storage you're using, what method you're using to connect to it, and if you're having any issues. And when you're done, you're gonna to wanna to check out this video about the three biggest issues in FSLogix and how you can fix them quick and easy. Happy learning.